Oh, welcome, welcome everyone. I'm so excited to have you all in here. I can already see some of us are ready. We've got like our headbands on, we're like ready to go. I absolutely love it, this is so good. So this is gonna be our DIY skincare class. And this was actually, these are actually recipes that you guys all wanted. I did a poll in our group to see what recipes you were looking for and this was it. Um, so if you haven't done it already, please go text uh, your team, make sure they know about the class. Uh, we are recording, but it's so much fun to be here live. Um, we're going to be doing four DIY recipes tonight for our fun spa night. And this is going to be just like a chillax, grab your Ningxia Red cocktail or mocktail. If you've got questions, if you want to unmute and share anything, we would love to hear from you. Um, but this is just a class to really show you how versatile our essential oils are, in particular, the oils that you get for free. So how many of you have any have ever gotten oil for free from Young Living? right? A promo oil, right? Maybe um, they give those out every single month. And let me just tell you, there are certain months where I'm like, oh yes, baby. I mean, every month it's like a nice surprise, but there are certain months where I'm like, oh yes, these are great skincare oils. Um, this month is no exception. Um, I know there's like geranium bourbon, um, which is in this month's freebies. And I'm going to use that to, uh, tonight. Um, but there are some others that are phenomenal. Like a couple of months ago, um, we had a Ale lemmy and Alang Alang, these are fantastic skincare oils. The, these were, I think, um, back in January, or I'm sorry, February. Then we've got the geranium bourbon, which is this month. So very similar to like a regular geranium, okay? And then of course, last month, we got some great oils, right? Like we got um, our cedar wood, and we also got, um, we also got, um, like pine and things like that, right? Which is great. Rosemary, which is fantastic for the hair. Um, so those are all oils that you can use anytime. So you can use them in your diffuser, um, but this class is really kind of breaking down and showing you how you can use them for skincare. I don't know about you, but I love using um, oils for skincare. It's probably my number one way that I love to use my oils. So I'm gonna show you DIY, and then I'm also gonna show you some ways that you can actually kind of power boost some products that you might already have too. So you guys ready? Okay, we're gonna get started. So hopefully you have your supplies. I'm gonna show you what my setup looks like. I kind of put everything all together. Let me show you. Look at this. I got everything ready. It looks pretty. <laughs> it's like if you were like at a regular spa. I've got all my goodies in here. Just kind of just makes it easier that way. Um, but this could be really fun if you've not done this before, like invite your girlfriends over and then you can also show them um, how to make the stuff too. You could pick a couple of really simple things. Everything in the class tonight that I'm gonna show you, this is all stuff that everybody has in their pantry. This is not like specialty order. You gotta go on Amazon and get it. This is really simple stuff um, that you can easily get, okay? So we, for instance, um, we're gonna make um, a blackhead remover. Did anybody ever use the Biore strips? I'm gonna show my tray again, okay? Anybody ever use those Biore um, strips? Do you remember that? Like it would, you would put them on and you would peel them off. There it is, see? Um, you would peel them off and it would take off all the blackheads. So we're gonna make a homemade version of that with an egg white. Yeah, you had no idea, right? So make sure you've got, um, an egg white, um, half a lemon, and some paper towels. And that's gonna be the basis of uh, how we're gonna make that. We're also gonna make, I'm calling this a at-home microdermabrasion, right? I don't know if you've ever had anything like that, like maybe gone to a spa or just gotten a facial right before, done a home facial. Can I just tell you one of the simplest, easiest ways you can make your own facial? Guess what? Baking soda, baking soda and water. That's basically like a very simple microdermabrasion that you can do at home. What I really love about baking soda is that the granule, the gra the grains are really uh, fine. And so it really kind of gets in there and like removes sort of like that dead skin. Um, I just went to Hawaii uh, a few weeks ago, loved it. But what I notice is that I'm in the sun a lot. And then the days after I'm like taking a shower and I'm like, oh my gosh, all this skin is coming off. Like it was crazy, like all this dead skin. Um, so the microdermabrasion is just a really great way to kind of renew, right? The skin, right? Get all that dead skin off, but it's very gentle. Um, is anybody sensitive? Here, I'll turn on. There we go, transcription. Is anybody sensitive to baking soda? I know some of us use baking soda to like make deodorant and some of us are a little sensitive to that. If you are, here's a quick trick. You know what you can use instead? Oatmeal. 
Okay, so dry oatmeal, it could be the quick oatmeal, it could be the, you know, the one that you, the steel cut oatmeal, any kind of oatmeal. Um, but what you do is you put it in a blender or a food processor, and then you just blend it so that it's very fine, like your baking soda. Okay, I find that if I use like the regular <laughs> oatmeal flakes, I'm like, oh, this is really rough. This is rough on my skin, it kind of hurts. But when you blend it, when it's dry, it makes a really fine powder that's perfect for doing an at-home microdermabrasion. That's basically it. And then we're gonna use our promo oils. The other thing we're gonna make tonight, tell me in the chat box, has anybody ever dealt with like hair buildup? Am I the only one? Like oily hair, or like maybe you, you've used a lot of product or like you've washed your hair and you're like, ooh, just that, that flakiness, right? On your hair. I don't always wash my hair every day. Does anybody ever deal with that? I go through phases of this. Yeah, I do it too. Um, so there's a few different reasons why that might happen to you. Um, the number one thing, and I used to be so guilty of this, is you know when you wash your hair at night or in the morning, whenever you wash your hair, if you go to bed with your hair wet, that can cause like just like kind of like mildew, like mildew, like in your hair. I know, isn't that crazy? But it's it's kind of gross. Like I used to do it all the time. But what happens is, is you're kind of trapping the moisture there for a prolonged period of time. And it's like for hours and hours and hours, just all this mm, buildup starts to grow in there. So just something to kind of watch out for. My little guy likes to take a shower um, at night and he doesn't blow dry his hair. And so in the morning, I'm like, yep, yep. We can see it, that like gross buildup that you can see in your nails. Um, so quick tip, if you do like to do that, I personally like to take a shower at night. What I would suggest is after you wash and, you know, come out of the shower, blow dry your hair, especially the roots, the ends are fine. I mean, you could do the ends too, but I make sure that I blow dry the whole, all my whole head. At least everything is dry around the roots. And then if I'm too tired, right, don't want to do the ends, I'll just kind of let lightly do it and then go to bed. But that way you're going to avoid having too much of that buildup. So yeah, you don't want that. You don't want that buildup from the moisture. Um, in particular, if you're susceptible to like a dandruff or something like that, yeah, make sure you don't go to sleep with your hair wet. Um, but what we're going to do tonight to help combat that, or maybe use a lot of product like hair product. I used to be so guilty of using a lot of hair product. Um, what I find is something very simple, apple cider vinegar. We all have it or I think we all have it, right? We should all probably have it in our pantry. It's very simple. You're gonna, we're gonna do an apple cider vinegar rinse. So it's basically half apple cider vinegar, half water. You can put it in a spray bottle or put it in a bowl and rinse your hair with it. And we're gonna add some oils to that too. Like tea tree is really great for something like this, right? Just to kind of clarify the roots. So we're gonna do that. Uh, but tonight we're gonna leave it in. So we're gonna smell a little bit like a salad, okay? So if anybody's doing this with me, we're gonna do it a little bit towards the end. Otherwise you're gonna be smelling like a salad the whole night, um, but it's really great for helping with that buildup. And you can use this um, apple cider vinegar rinse. Um, you could use it once a week, twice a week, however often you need to, but that rinse is really gonna help to get rid of that buildup, especially if you've got oily hair in your roots, it's really fantastic. And if your hair is a little bit drier, you can use a little less apple cider vinegar. Maybe you're doing like a quarter cup, right? Of like your apple cider vinegar and maybe three fourths cup of water, right? My hair tends to be a little bit more oily at the roots. So I like to do a half and half kind of a mixture. So that's really great. And then the first thing we're gonna do is gonna be super simple. And I'm gonna show you how to do it right now. Um, but this is a DIY under eye dark roller um, serum, okay? So dark, who's got dark circles under the eyes? Tell me I'm not the only one. I totally have this, yes. Okay, so this is a recipe um, that I got from another team member who, I mean, it was pretty dramatic. I'm gonna bump it in our Let's Be Frank group so you can go see it. It was pretty dramatic, like just within a week, it was like major change. So you're gonna get a roller, bo roller bottle or you could use a empty essential oil bottle. If you're not reusing your essential oil bottles, this is a great reason to do it. Super budget friendly um, and you can put the roll on fitment on top, but I've got this. So what you're gonna do, I'm gonna show you. We're gonna do, let's see here, Frank or Alemi, right? So Alemi, we got free a couple months ago. Um, or, and you're gonna add lemon, okay? And then we're gonna also do lavender. Okay, so if you didn't already know this, 
Okay, let's see. Did I bring my Frank? Yes. So Frank or Alemi. So these two are like cousins, okay? These two are amazing. They're fantastic um, for all things skin. Um, in particular, if you've got uh, dark circles or if you've got fine lines, these two are fantastic. Um, so Alemi is often called the poor man's Frank and it was free a couple of months ago. So again, if you're not sure how to use your oils, just go ahead and grab them, okay? Um, something else that I suggest is if you don't already have it, the essential oils pocket reference or desk reference, that's often how I kind of learn how to use oils. Life Steps app, that's free. You can get that right now. Um, and you can go look to see how to use things. But these two are pretty similar, frankincense and Alemi. So I'm gonna use Alemi and I'm gonna do about four drops in the roller. Okay, so we're gonna add four drops. One, two, three, four. It comes out really fast. Okay. Then we're gonna add our lavender. So lavender is fantastic for the skin as well. We also call this the Swiss army knife of oils. Um, I was cooking last night and burned my finger, touching the stove, right? Touching it where I wasn't supposed to. Lavender was like instant relief. It was amazing. Um, lavender is good for all things skin, in particular, if you're dealing with redness, but also can help with the, those dark under eye circles too. Again, four drops. We're going to do four drops of each, okay? And then lemon. So lemon is really great for the skin. I use citrus oils kind of sparingly on my skin in particular. So I'm only going to do like two drops, but you could do up to four in here. Um, Remember, citrus oils like lemon can make your skin photosensitive. What that means is you might be more likely to burn if you go in the sun within 24 hours. So if you put this on at night, right, and then you go to the beach the next day, that might cause a problem, right, in some people. Um, if you use it the night before and you wait a couple of days before you go out in the sun, you'll be good. Okay, so it can make the skin a little photosensitive. Um, I have a tendency to really get melasma and um, spot sunspots, right? So I use my citrus oils sparingly, but this one's really great for those under eye circles. Okay, then you're gonna add your favorite facial um, carrier oil. So um, I've got almond here. Almond's a really nice one. It's very light. I find that it doesn't break me out. Um, a few others that are really good that I would say reach for that if you have it is um, your rose hip um, or you could do um, jojoba would be really great too. Jojoba is actually really fantastic for the skin. It's probably the carrier oil that's the closest to um, your the oil that's on your skin, your sebum. So this is it. So where's my roller top? So this is it right here. This is our dark eye our dark under eye roller. So we're gonna shake it up, shake it up. Thank you so much, Stacy. And so what you're gonna do is at night, you're just gonna roll it under the eyes like this. Oh, it smells so good. Roll it under the eyes and that's it. That's it. So easy to do, right? What size roller? I used a 10 ml. There you go, 10 ml, but you're just rolling it, rolling it. And this really helps with the under eye dark circles under there, okay? Now, something else that you can do if DIY isn't really your thing, if you haven't tried this yet, this is the Wolfberry eye cream, or maybe you do have it. You know what you could do just to kind of simplify? Sometimes I'll be like, I ain't got time to make a roller, even though a roller is super easy to do, right? I will often do this. I will add my Alemi like direct to um, my um, eye cream, or every time you use your eye cream, put a little dollop right? Like in the palm of your hand, add maybe a drop of oil each, and then put that underneath your eye. So there's a couple of different ways that you could do this. Um, but I really love using my oils, especially underneath my eyes. A lemon really makes a big difference. But the addition of the lemon and lavender really helps to target those dark spots under there and those dark circles. So that's awesome, right? So easy. I know it's so easy. Just again, be careful with the citrus, okay? Citrus is awesome, but you just, you know, if you're just like going out to, you know, run errands, it's not a big deal. I'm talking like you're like laying out in the sun for hours. That's when you're gonna wanna really be careful. Okay, so next step, this is gonna be so fun because I'm gonna show you how easy it is to do. Can you use it every night? Yeah, you can use it every night, but here's what I would suggest is use it for a couple of nights in a row and just see how you do. And if it's fine, keep on using it. If you're finding that like, ooh, your skin's sensitive, maybe you do it every other night. 
right? So you can kind of really, you know, see how your skin's kind of reacting to it. But those oils are really, really gentle. The only one that I would say someone may have a little sensitivity to might be the lemon, but even in that dilution, it is so diluted. Um, I don't think anyone's going to have any problems, but just kind of listen to your body and back off if you need to, but you should be able to use it every night. Okay. So that's our under eye dark roller. Okay. So now I'm going to show you how to make the at home microdermabrasion, the cheap version. Did you know if you go in to like a medical spa and get microdermabrasion, it could be like $500. $500. Crazy, right? So we're going to do the at-home version. This is an at-home scrub that is fantastic. So what we're going to do is, uh, this is hard for me because I am not a measurer. Can you tell me, tell me in the chat box, do you measure or do you eyeball? I'm like an eyeball kind of person. So when people ask me for recipes, I'm like, Ugh, okay, the next time I do it, I'm really going to have to measure it, but I'm kind of an eyeball type of person. So here's what we're going to do in a very small like ramekin type bowl, okay, we're gonna grab some baking soda. I had to guess maybe a tablespoon, okay? Baking soda. Again, if your skin is sensitive to baking soda, like for instance, if you don't like to use baking soda in your um, deodorant, right? Um, then maybe you might wanna use oatmeal. We talked about this a little bit earlier, but oatmeal, finely ground in a blender, um, not cooked oatmeal, dry oatmeal, okay? So you don't wanna cook it. Um, those oatmeal flakes can work very similar to a baking soda, but I will tell you, I am sensitive underneath my pits, right? Like I can't always, like sometimes it's like baking soda irritates under my pits, but I absolutely love to use this on my face and it's okay. So maybe just test it and see how your skin does. So we're gonna eyeball. I wish I could give you exact measurements, but it's basically about a tablespoon. If I had to guess how much water, now we're just gonna add some water to the little ramekin. Ugh, two teaspoons, I don't know. You're just looking for consistency, right? You don't want it too watery, so I added a little bit too much. So you don't want it too watery, you want it a little bit thick. What consistency would I describe it like? Um, more like a hot, like pasty. That's kind of what you're looking for, it's like a paste. So you don't want too much water, maybe just a teaspoon of water with a tablespoon of your baking soda. Oh, that's good. See, now it's kind of pasty. You can hear it. It's like, ooh, pasty. Okay. Perfect. Yeah, that's good. Oh, you know what? It's like toothpaste, like runny toothpaste. That's kind of the consistency you're going for, okay? So what we're going to do is you're going to add essential oils to this. My favorites, again, are lavender and frankincense, but from your promo oils, maybe you grab a lang, -a -lang and a lemmy. Those would be a really great, great combination too. Actually, a lang, -a -lang is really great for the skin. Um, it's great for the hair too. Um, you know what's free this month is geranium bourbon. I think I'm gonna add that one. So do you see how you can just kind of mix and match? But geranium bourbon, if you didn't already know this, geranium is fantastic for wrinkles too. So geranium and a lemmy or geranium and frankincense, oh, that would be the sweet spot. I'm gonna go floral and I'm gonna add geranium and alang-alang. Alang-alang is fantastic for the skin too. Just like um, the geranium, it really does help like with wrinkles and fine lines, helps to brighten the skin. Um, so I just did one drop of each. Um, if you want, you could even try a little bit of lemon in there or like an orange. Citrus would be really nice too. Citrus is really going to help to like clear and lighten, right? We're not going to leave this on for a really long time, but that's kind of like what citrus does to the skin. Okay. If you haven't done it already, I would suggest you take off your makeup. Okay. Look this. Young Living Baby Wipes, they're the best. This is what I use to take off my makeup. They're awesome. They're good for, let me just tell you, take off makeup. If you're on a plane and you're feeling stinky, that's me. I don't know what it is, but every time I ride on a plane, I, I'm not even like nervous, but I just get stinky. So I'm like watching, like I'm just gonna do portable shower. Okay, so if you didn't know this, the baby wipes are not just for baby bums, okay? It's fantastic for taking off makeup. And you know what? It smells good. It doesn't, my skin's super sensitive. Like, um, uh, when I used to use makeup wipes before, I, it, my skin would feel, would feel tingly. I can't use anything that's like alcohol-based. It's terrible. Yeah, I wasn't saying post-hike or after a run. That's right. Like you go work out and then you have to like pick up the kids from school and you're like, oh no, 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 no. I cannot be in the pickup line smelling like this. That's why you want the baby wipes, seriously. Okay. All right, see, look at all that. 
So good. And there's still plenty left over. So I can do that. I actually know we've got a few team members. You know what they do? They like cut it in half because it's pretty big. They cut it in half, right? They like rip it and put the other one back in and then reuse, and then, you know, not reuse, but only use um, half of a wipe at a time, which I think is so clever. So very budget friendly. So this is what we're going to do. We've got our little scrub ready to go. So what you're gonna do is this is gonna get a little messy, okay? So you might wanna have a little washcloth nearby. So I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna put a little bit in my hand and just like you would use any scrub, you're just gonna wipe it on your face like this. Wipe it, wipe it, wipe it. I forgot to bring a mirror. So I'm just gonna do this in the camera. And oh my gosh, it smells so good. Geranium, it's geranium and ylang ylang. So you just wipe, wipe, wipe. And you kind of just go back and forth and then you can start using both hands. And it's really nice. So again, the little grains of the baking soda help to slaw off the dead skin. So it's really awesome. I usually get it right up here on my forehead. That's where I get all the little bumpies, um, probably from makeup or just my hair getting in the way. But you can do this. You could actually leave something like this, like baking soda in the shower. Do you see? I did one drop each, Sue. So do you see this? I actually have plenty left over. So can I tell you something else that you can do? Again, just getting real personal. Am I the only one that gets this? But I will often break out on my back. It's just what it is. It's just, it's just what it is. So like my shoulders and my back. So you know what I'll do? Like, because I've got a little extra, you could do, right? all in the areas where you sort of have like, you know, breakouts or just need to slaw off your skin. If you had left over and you're in the shower, you can totally do it on your body too. So you're just doing that. It's so good. Thank you so much, Stacey, for posting the recipes. You're awesome. So I just like to keep going. So can I ask you, how many of you loved the satin mint scrub? You guys love the satin mint scrub? Have you guys tried this one? It's awesome, right? So can I tell you, I'm just going to be real honest, being real with you, I like the old formulation better because there were more cranes in it. Do you want to know the hack to this? I added bake. So what I did is I put a, a dollop of the satin mint scrub in my, the palm of my hand, and I just added some dry baking soda and I put it on. It was perfect, perfect. But that's just me. I like more grains in my scrub because I feel like the current formula there's not enough grain, like it's a little bit liquidy. Does that make sense? Does anybody else agree with me? You can add, like I said, the baking soda or uh, the crushed, the, the, um, the dry oatmeal that you're mixing, right? You can do that to add more of that texture to it. So don't throw it out, right? Don't go, I can't use this anymore. You can hack it, okay? I'm all about the hacking. Oh my gosh, my skin smells so good. Okay, so you can do that for a few minutes, right? You could leave it on if you wanted to, but it's really nice. The baking soda um, is really great for the skin. It's, you know, helps to alkaline, um, helps to get all the dead skin off. So I'm just gonna use washcloth to get it off, to get most of it off anyway. And um, that's kind of it. That's your at-home microdermabrasion. So what I would suggest with microdermabrasion is not every day. Um, I would say mm, three times a week maybe four if you feel like you need it, but you don't wanna to scrub too often. Definitely not every day. Um, your skin, right, is just not made for that, but for sure, three times a week is perfect. So I'm getting all that off, I'm gonna use my baby wipes again, just to get it all off. But I can definitely feel the difference. The texture is a lot smoother. It feels really good. So just getting all of it off. Ideally, you want to rinse, right? Like rinse with water and get it all off. But that's how you make a scrub. It's super, super easy. Okay, any questions so far? Simple, right? Okay, so this is the fun one. This is the one that you're going to be like, oh no, she did not just do that. Oh yes, she is going to do that. Okay, so we're going to make the, the blackhead remover. I just did it the other night and I was like, oh my gosh, it's so crazy how it works. So there's a couple of ways that you can do this and I'll post, um, you can do it with gelatin as well. It's just with the gelatin, you need the hot water and it was just too difficult to do during this demonstration. Um, the other thing is like legit, if you use the gelatin formula, it will take off everything, like the little hairs on your cheek. So if you're looking for like 
blackhead removal and like hair removal all in one, do it. Just watch out for the eyebrows, okay? Watch out for that because it'll take everything off. Like it is like, whoa, it's crazy. So I'll post the recipe in just a little bit. I've got it on my blog. I like this one because it's a little bit more gentle and I feel like I can kind of control it a little bit better. Um, but let me show you how to do it. Okay, so you're gonna get an egg. Okay, and we're gonna separate it. So you just have the egg whites. So I'm gonna crack it. Like I'm literally cracking it right now. Okay, so egg white only. You can discard the yolk or use the yolk. I did it one time and I made like a custard with the yolk because I hate wasting stuff. So um, one egg white, okay. And then one lemon, okay, or half a lemon. And we're just gonna get the juice. I'm gonna put the juice in here. Sorry, I wish you could see it all. Juicing it, juicing it, putting the juice in here. Oh, yes. Now, for something like this, because we're going for blackheads, you want things that are going to be clarifying, like really clarifying and like it's going to like pull the, uh, the gunk and gross stuff out, right? So, tea tree is going to be one of my faves. Um, I feel like tea tree is often free throughout the year. If you are not using, I think so I'm using my, my bedroom as a kitchen, that's right. If you're not using tea tree um, for your skincare or cleaning, you are seriously missing out. I totally reach for this oil all the time. So whenever it's free, I'm like, oh yes, 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 yes. I put it in my spray bottle with my thieves and clean my home with it and everything smells amazing. I put it in my laundry. I use it for my skincare. Um, well, I'll use it for spot treatment, right? Like for if I've got a blemish and my teenagers use it, it is awesome. So for this blackhead removal, tea tree is gonna be a really great one. Um, I'm just gonna do um, one drop. Um, others that are really good for this type of thing, again, your lavender, it's good for all things. Um, you could do anything else. You could do geranium, a um, let's see here, the lang lang frankincense. You could do so many different things with this, um, but I even rosemary, I think rosemary and cedarwood, right? We got rosemary last month. Rosemary would be another really good one to do. So what we're going to do with this is we crack the egg, we added uh, one to two drops each of the oil, and then we put half a lemon. We're just going to whisk it, right? So you could whisk it with the fork or with the whisk. So you're just going to stir it, stir it, stir it, stir it. Okay, are you ready for this? This is going to be so fun. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. Use whatever you have on hand, okay? So if you have just wanted to like dig in with your hands and put it on your face, you can do that. But I've um, got my little brush here, my little, I use this to like, you know, brush my food, right? Um, you're going to do this. Watch. Ready? So we mixed it well. You're going to like brush it on your skin like this. So brush it on the area that you intend to use the mask. Okay. Brush it pretty liberally. Put it on. Put it on. Okay. So normally I would do my whole face, but because I'm going to be talking, it won't work because that was the thing that I did one time. I was eating. And so this whole part would not sort of adhere. So you kind of have to like sit still, just like those Biore strips, right? You need to kind of sit still. So then we're going to grab some paper towel and we're literally just going to like rip off some strips and just kind of like put it over our nose. I know we look ridiculous, but it is what it is. This is the DIY Biore strip, you guys. So just keep doing it until you cover the surface that you want to get covered, okay? So let's say I just kind of want to do this. Let's see here. Maybe I'll do a little bit more. I need to get all of this. Okay. So the paper towel kind of sticks to the area because the egg wash was there. Now we're going to apply it one more time over the paper towel like this, see? So you apply it over. And I kind of smell like a salad right now. We're really gonna smell like a salad when we add our vinegar hair rinse. So see, you're just kind of like putting it all over and it's gonna stick on. It's hard for me to do it without a mirror, but this is what you do. So this is what makes it stick on. So just keep doing it. So what happens is once you're done with this, what the egg mixture sticks to the paper towel, which then sticks to your skin. And then after about 15, 20 minutes, just like those Biore strips, it's going to like harden. And then you're just gonna peel it off, just like those Biore strips. 
That's it. See, so we're putting it on. Yeah, the last time I did this, it took up all these black heads, which was really nice, but it didn't like rip off all the hair off my face, which, you know, you might want that. So if you do want that, I've got a gelatin one that you can use too. The gelatin one's nice because it's got charcoal. Yeah, this one's nice and gentle. Um, and not everybody has gelatin, right? Or charcoal lying around, but most people, right? I think most of us have like an egg and a lemon in our, in our pantry or in our kitchen. Okay, there we go. So just keep liberally putting it on. You can do this over your whole face, like I said, but you just wanna make sure you're not moving in that area. So that's why I'm just doing this right now. I know it looks ridiculous. My son was like, what are you doing? I'm like, I know it's for beauty. <laughs> I smell like a salad. It's all good. It's for beauty. Okay. So it feels great. I already feel like a little bit of the tingling from like the lemon juice in there. And the egg is what makes it sort of stick to your face, the egg white. Okay. There, that should be good. Just gonna smooth it in, smooth it in, make sure it's in. Okay. There we go. All right. So hopefully I'll have some time before we end tonight so I can peel it off and show it to you. Okay. So let that go for like 15 to 20 minutes. Yep. And that's kind of it. So how often can you do this? Um, you could do it a couple of times a week. Again, you don't wanna do it too often um, just because it's just it's kind of jarring for your skin, right? Like you're constantly sort of peeling. Um, but what I do like to do is the microdermabrasion first. So I like to kind of, you know, wash my face. Um, I don't do anything else at that point, but I'm like washing it, right? And then afterwards I'll use the scrub, right? Again, that removes kind of like all that surface level um, dead skin. And then I like to do this peel off mask, right? Peel it off. And then once that's done, I'll do like one more wash and then continue with my regular sort of routine. The toner, the serum, the moisturizer. So you can do all of that. So if you're like, all right, this whole Biore thing you're doing, I don't know if I want to do that. Okay, you can always do this instead, okay? You can see mine's well used. It's got charcoal all over the side of it. Um, this is the charcoal mask. Um, it's amazing from Young Living. So um, instead of sort of this peel off mask, um, this charcoal mask, you put it on your face and then you sort of, it's really nice actually. So the charcoal, what that does is it helps to draw out those impurities. So the blackheads and all the gross stuff that's kind of laying in our skin. Um, and then um, it'll kind of dry up on your skin, right? It's got that clay, right? So it dries up on your skin, um, pulling it out. And then you, when you wash your face, you kind of scrub it off. So um, these two work really nicely together. Actually, if you've not done it before, um, the charcoal mask and the satin mint um, scrub. So these two are great. But sometimes you got to get deep. You got to get deep and get all those blackheads out. Okay. Any questions so far? Feel free to ask. No questions so far? Okay, you guys are good. Okay, we're gonna make the hair rinse. Are you ready for this? This one is so simple. Um, like I said, you can you we can um, mix up, right? We can change up the, the dilution of what we wanna do here. Um, if you've got a uh, drier hair or a drier scalp, you'll want to do more of a uh, one quarter to three quarter kind of ratio. If you have normal to oily hair, I would do a half, you know, half and half kind of ratio. So have a spray bottle here, okay? How big is this? Probably two ounces. I don't know offhand, um, but I'm gonna do about half with the apple cider vinegar. Oh, I'm just gonna make it. I have just enough to make this. Look at that, perfect. And then I'm gonna do the other half with water. But this is for me, okay? You can do a little bit less of the apple cider vinegar. Okay, so this is gonna be our hair rinse. You could also do this in a bowl and just kind of rinse your hair over a bowl or like a squeeze bottle, right? Like you could reuse a shampoo bottle. Um, yeah, exactly. Like the one that Wendy is showing up right now, you know, like a ketchup bottle from like, um, the, like a diner, right? Those, you could do that. So whatever kind of works for you, whatever kind of bottles that you have. Um, but since this is like, again, we're clarifying. So hopefully you're seeing a theme here, like we did with the strips 
We're going to do tea tree, which is very clarifying, excellent for sort of that scalp buildup. Um, I eyeball it, um, but I usually do about four to five drops of the tea tree. And then I would do um, rosemary, cedar wood. Those are really great ones. Pine is also really good. Lavender is also fantastic for that sort of buildup, okay? Um, so good. So I'm gonna do this, add my four or five drops of lavender. And then you could do, oh, here's cedar wood. Cedar wood is good for all things hair. If you don't know how to use cedar wood, it's great for sleep, okay? You can do cedar wood and lavender in the diffuser, but it's also amazing for hair. So not only helping to clarify hair and to like help with the buildup, but the other thing, have you guys heard about this healthy hair um, spray? So what it does is, I will just tell you from my own experience, I've totally noticed it. Um, I had COVID back in January. And one of the things that I noticed afterwards was I was just losing hair, like not big chunks, but I had a couple of friends who did, like they lost like a lot of hair, but I definitely noticed I'm brushing my hair and I'm like, there's a lot more hair than I'm normally, than I normally have. So I'm the kind of person where I'm like, if I notice it, I am dealing with it right at the time, not waiting on this. So I upped my sulfurzyme, so sulfurzyme powder, um, sulfurzyme, um, you could do the capsules as well, but I normally do like a serving of my sulfurzyme. And I was like, all right, all right, I'm doubling this up. I'm doing two of the sulfurzyme. So you can see I've got my Ningxia Red cocktail right here, two ounces of Ningxia Red. I've got a uh, half a teaspoon of my sulfurzyme powder, but I drink this, you know, and then water. I drink this two times a day. So really good for your hair. But the other thing that I'm making is um, it's a healthy hairspray. So Cedarwood, rosemary, lavender, and you add, I don't know, again, I just eyeball things, five drops in a spray bottle like this, like just what we did, but instead of doing your apple cider vinegar, um, you add water and witch hazel. Or if you've got the Royal Hawaiian Sandalwood Hydrosol, you could do that too. That's the other one. Sandalwood is excellent for the hair and you just spray your roots, spray your roots, and I just do it every single night. The other benefit of using that healthy hairspray, what I've noticed is because I don't wash my hair every day, it's almost, so it's not a dry shampoo, it's like a wet shampoo, right? Wet shampoo, so in the morning when I'm feeling like, ugh, my hair is kind of limp and a little oily, not ready for like a full hair wash yet, when I spray it on my hair and I just, I feel like it just kind of like refreshes my roots so they don't look oily and my hair doesn't feel limp and gross. So love using that healthy hairspray. So in particular, right, all up along my hairline, all the spots, that's where I'm sort of using that. So you can use those exact same oils, cedarwood, sandalwood, tea tree, lavender, alang alang, right? I'm doing it in this um, hair rinse. So half, this bottle is half apple cider vinegar, half water, and then the oils that I just mentioned. All right, so if you got your hair up, this might be the time, okay? That you'll want to spray your hair, let me show you. So what you'll wanna do, this is more for demonstrative purposes. If I was doing this right on the regular, I would wash my hair like normal and then kind of use this as like um, my rinse, right? If you didn't know this, um, apple cider vinegar can actually be like a condition of a rinse. It sounds crazy because you're like, wait, it's like vinegar, isn't it acidic? Um, it is, but it actually conditions your hair too, which sounds so counterintuitive, but it's totally true. But I, just for demonstrative purposes right now, I'm just kind of spraying it on, spraying it on. You can just do a few minutes. Um, but for me, like tonight, I'll probably be keeping this on for like a good 45 minutes, but that's okay. I got lots of buildup. So the apple cider vinegar conditions your hair. Again, I know it seems counterintuitive, but it does. There's actually all kinds of recipes online on using an apple cider vinegar rinse for your hair. Like some people don't use conditioner at all. They use apple cider vinegar. Yeah, Wendy, are you one of those? Do you like to do that too? Please unmute, tell us if you don't mind. We have in the past, um, I've done it stronger and it kind of burns the skin. So that's why I was asked. I like that you um, did it more diluted, but my son has incredibly terrible buildup and he has these chunky flakes and they, all of my kids have always had chunky flakes and I'm like, their diets are clean. So everything's clean and I don't know what it is. They pass a certain age and then it stops. 
but it's really weird. It's like cradle cap as a teenager. Does that make sense? My teenagers had that too. I think something yeah. like when they go through like a growth spurt, I feel like maybe like right when puberty starts to hit, it starts up again. I think you're right. It's like cradle cap for like my, teenagers. Totally. And my son has this incredibly, he has curly hair and it's so thick. It's like an Afro that just holds on to all the stuff. You know what I mean? So I'm going to be trying this on him. Yes. Try it on him and make sure he doesn't go to bed with his hair wet. Yes. So that's interesting. Mm -hmm. We do that a lot. Mm -hmm. So that, that, yeah. I thought that was very interesting. Yeah. We do your, remember, uh, a few, I don't know, a year or two years ago when you did that, um, you know, the thieves dishwashing or dish liquid yeah. dish soap, that one with the baking mm -hmm. soda. So we do that with, and we have a coconut scrub brush and he'll like totally scrub his head and like, we'll scrub it really well. And it'll like pull it off, but then it's back within a few days. Yeah. So we're going to try this. Yeah. I also just think it's like, think about like when you wash your hair at night and you're going to bed with your hair damp. You're, it's not like you're up like this, right? Where air kind of gets in your head's flat on the pillow. Yeah. So, you yeah. know, it's just like those spots you're just trapping in that moisture. And then it's like, your scalp is like straight on this. I don't know. It's just like mildew and gross stuff. I I've been known to do it too. Some of my kids do it as well. Um, but it's just, it's a breeding ground for like bacteria to sort of build up. So you know, just putting it, putting it out there. We've totally done it too. Yeah. So this feels really nice, actually. I mean, again, I smell like a salad, got egg, egg white on my face. I've got apple cider vinegar in my hair. I have baking soda on my face. I mean, we could be baking something here. Um, but seriously, I mean, beauty is totally in your kitchen. It really is. Um, but it feels really good. It feels really good. So you can kind of like get it in there, the apple cider vinegar. Um, I know some people like Wendy was saying, they just keep like a bottle like this, an empty shampoo bottle and just fill it up and they just, just kind of do that rinse. I know a ton of people who don't use conditioner and do this instead. So Wendy mentioned something that was great as well um, for clarifying your hair. Like a, I love the Young Living shampoo and conditioner, but again, my hair is just very prone to build up. It just is. And I have to change it up. Otherwise it's like limp like really limp and greasy. Um, the Thieves dishwashing soap, like Wendy mentioned, is phenomenal. You would never think, right? Like why would you use dish soap for your hair? But think about it. It's great for degreasing, right? Like you can degrease like the pans, the pots, right? Like, I don't know about you, but like we like really work our like cookware. It's like gross and caked on um, from our cooking. So the Thieves dish soap is a great degreaser, but works great for your hair too, for buildup. So it's so good. You can kind of put it in there. The other totally unrelated hack with the Thieves dish soap is it's a great stain remover with your clothes. You can mix that with some Thieves household cleaner. Again, I just eyeball things. I'm not necessarily measuring, um, but just like, you know, little pea-sized amount of each and mix it in with like maybe toothbrush or with your fingers, with your fingernails and just get out a stain. It works really, really well. So apple cider vinegar wash, you're just gonna leave it in for a few minutes. I'll probably leave mine on um, for the next half hour, which is great. Good, work it, work it, that vinegar. Get all that built up out, I'm good. So. The mask is still wet, so I don't know if it'll be ready in time, but hopefully I'll be able to show you when I peel it off. I'm trying not to move too much around my nose too, um, but it works great up here, right? You could do it in all the spots, right? Wherever you're sort of needing to like remove those blackheads, um, it works fantastic for that. So those are kind of our three or four recipes that we're doing tonight. Um, Stacy has been very generous and posted the recipes here and we'll post them in the group as well. And like I said, I do have a charcoal peel off mask that you can do and I'll post that recipe in just a little bit. But while we're waiting, we're waiting for my Biore strip to dry up. Did you guys have questions? Do you have requests for other recipes that maybe we could share with you? Like this is the time you could ask anything. Sue is asking, can you use a blow dryer? to dry the paper towel like on my face. Maybe, I haven't tried that, possibly. I feel like maybe it's all in my head. Maybe the longer it sits there, the more blackheads it's gonna draw. I don't know. Um, you might be able to try it. 
and see how it works. But that's just in my head what I'm telling myself. <laughs> As I sit here, it's drawing everything out because there's so much gunk in there. So I need the time. Um, but do you have a skincare need? Ask in the chat box. Yeah, ask in the chat box or feel free to unmute yourself. Or maybe you've got like a great skincare DIY. We want to hear from you. This is so fun. Oh, Allison's saying hand sanitizer is a great zit zapper. I have not tried that yet, but I could totally see how that works. It's got the, it's got the alcohol in there. I could see that. Yeah, that's what I would think too, Sue, is does it burn? My skin's a little sensitive. Allison's like, she's got tough skin. <laughs> her skin's like, nah, it's good. She's the one who can totally put lemon under her eyes and not be photosensitive. Yeah, she's got good skin. What other questions do you have? Do you have dry skin? Do you have like um, spots, right? Like melasma type things. Um, I've got that too. Tell me what's going on. Maybe you've got dry hair. You've got thick dry hair. I'm jealous. Mine's like the opposite of that. I know Ashley uses coconut oil in her hair. I could never do that. My hair would be like limp and greasy, but she's got this thick mane of curly hair. So I know um, coconut oil works really great for her. Tell me what questions you guys got. Who's gonna try this? Who's gonna try these recipes? I'm gonna try my at-home Biore strips <laughs> with the eggs. <laughs> Love it. Ooh, this is good. Allison's saying she uses the Marat Shave Oil um, in her hair. Actually, I've done that too. If you have flyaways, you know, I've got like a part here. And so when I've got my flyaways are going nuts, I'll do a little bit of the Marat Shave Oil and I'll just kind of like help tame the flyaways like that. And then I'll put them in the ends. So I actually used to buy like expensive coconut Moroccan oil, like hair serums. I'm telling you the Mirage shape oil easily beats all of them. It smells amazing, like alluring with like that floral scent. But yeah, you can use it to shave your legs, to shave, you know, other areas, but you can use it for your hair, right? To tame, to like you know, condition the ends and you leave it on like a serum. You don't have to wash it out um, or tame flyaways. I love that one. So good. Oily skin with acne. Oh girl, Amanda, I can help you. This is totally up my alley. I'm in my forties and I still deal with acne. Okay, that's funny. Let's see here. All right, so let me tell you, um, for acne, uh, for me personally, it is 100, oh, I can feel it drying up. It was gonna be good, I can feel it. Um, for acne, for me personally, uh, and I've dealt with it ever since I was a teenager, totally a diet thing. So if you haven't addressed your diet yet, this is definitely something that I would suggest, um, you know, with our skin, with our hair, like Wendy was talking about buildup, right? With her kiddos, I get the buildup too. Some of it could be diet related. So I loved what Wendy, she was like, we're eat clean. It's not diet related because that's usually the first thing that I would recommend, like you need to clean up your diet. So there are different triggers for different people. Um, I do find that gluten and processed food can definitely be a trigger for acne as well as dairy. So those are the top three things that I'm like, you gotta, you gotta kick it out, right? Um, sugar can also be a trigger um, for acne as well. Um, this is why I think about why a lot of teenagers get so much acne. It's not just, it's hormones, right? Cause they're going through puberty, but it's also like, think what a typical teenager eats, right? It's junk. A lot of it's so much junk. Um, and I use that to help educate my kids when they're like, oh my gosh, I'm waking out. I'm like, what did you eat? So they know, they know, right? But diet is a big one. So address the triggers. Um, I will say nobody's perfect or hundred percent, right? Like every once in a while, I'll have a treat. Um, so something that you'll want to do is get a digestive enzyme. One of my favorites, um, is Allerzyme. It's fantastic for the skin. I don't know, um, Amanda, if you were on that oily underground that we had, I don't even remember when we did this one a few months ago, it was all about, um, skin, 
but we had some amazing testimonials where we had moms sharing how their teens, you know, had, I mean, it's hard when you've got acne, right? Like I've got a, a teenager who deals with acne and it's hard. It's hard for their self-esteem and, you know, getting out there. So they just did uh, a lot of Allerzyme. Allerzyme at every meal and it really helped to reduce their acne. So digestive enzyme, again, Allerzyme is one in particular. If we don't have Allerzyme, you could use detox zyme, essential zyme. Those are all fantastic, but address your diet, get on a, um, a digestive enzyme like Allerzyme. I would also highly suggest sulfur zyme. Sulfur zyme, um, I, like we just said earlier, excellent for your hair, also really good for your skin. Like it really does when I Sometimes when I go on vacation, I'm not great about taking my vitamins with me, right? Or if I'm busy, I sometimes forget and I can tell because then I'll start to see little zits popping up and I'm telling you, sulfur zyme is phenomenal for the skin. Um, so just add that to your daily routine, like with your Nature Red, it's awesome. But the added perk is it's great for um, your scalp too. Yeah, oily skin. Um, one other thing that I would say with skincare is, I don't know if you're doing this, Amanda, um, but ditch the um, non-oily stuff. I used to remember, do you remember all the marketing they did back, back in the day where if you have oily skin, use non-oily products. And what I found was when I use those products, I would break out more. And I didn't know that like our skin needs to have some oil. So it might also kind of like be making sure you're using the right skincare products for your skin. Um, I personally love the CBD Beauty Boost. That's a serum, right? Oil-based. Um, it's phenomenal. Um, it's got CBD and it's got rose. It's, it's fantastic, but the oil sort of balances out your skin, right? So balances out your skin. I just do a few drops and it just feels amazing, um, but definitely avoiding um, the oily non-oily products. I would also avoid alcohol-based products on your skincare. Um, I just find that for me, it personally dries me out. And then when my, when, when my skin's dried out, you know what it does? It makes more oil. So the oil helps to quell the oil production, right? That's kind of the thing that, again, seems very counterintuitive, like the apple cider vinegar in your hair and health conditions. But oil in your skin, it's like your, your skin then receives that feedback and it's like, oh, okay, we've got enough oil. We don't need to overly produce oil. But when your skin's dry, it will overly produce oil. So make sure your skin is hydrated enough. Use the Beauty Boost. Um, make sure you're not using alcohol-based products like an alcohol-based toner, right? Try the Art Toner. Maybe try some Witch Hazel. Um, and then make sure your skin is nice and hydrated. Okay. Um, so those are some ways. Does anybody else have a tip for oily skin? Anyone else have oily skin in here? Any other tips? Okay. So hopefully that helps Amanda, but I totally get it. Again, I'm in my forties and I still deal with zits and oily skin. Um, I personally find that like what shows up on our skin is kind of an indication of what's going on inside. That's kind of usually what happens. So try the supplements, the diet, making those skincare switches. Um, and, you know, I will just say in general, my skin, even at its best is going to be a little bit more oily than someone who might have dry skin. Um, I will just get my, my tissue, blot, 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 and then just kind of go on with my day. Um, but the other thing to think about, Amanda, again, we're in the same boat. Just think about it like this. You know what? You're going to be, as you age, you're going to be the one without, without the wrinkles. So take it, take it. <laughs> okay. What other questions do you guys have? We have about five more minutes. Wait, I was going to add something if that's okay. Please do. Um, so you kind of like, uh, alluded to it, but I was, I don't know when I learned this, but I love this fact. Um, that like when you get this, it's kind of like internal, like something's happening in your body. But you can also like use, I don't, and if you already said this, I apologize, but it, you can use your face as like um, a map. So where you get your zits can kind of tell you what system to focus on. I'll be real honest. I only remember where two of them are because that's where like I get them more than not. So I tend to like look it up again because I have a bad memory. Um, but uh, if you kind of get them around here and your chin, it's hormones. You get them around here. Um, I think actually right here, but I'm not hundred percent sure on that one. That's like all digestion. So um, 
that would like, I usually like take like the enzymes more so when I get them um, like at my nose. Um, but yeah, you can like look it up if, you know, you can Google it easy peasy, but um, it's just like a really cool thing to use to kind of help like what supplement to use or what should I um, focus on. Thank you so much, Allison. Yeah, go look it up, Amanda. That's the map. It's like skincare map or something. You'll see all these really cool images. I do remember that too, that the chin was hormones. And that's something that we didn't just talk about is that could be the source of like some imbalance as well is your hormones, right? So make sure you're looking at, um, again, diet enzymes. Those are all great things to help balance your hormones internally, but then also be looking at your, like your progestins plus and your clary sage, fluorescence, um, the prenolone cream. So there's different products, right? Based on whether you feel like you need to balance your estrogen, your progesterone. Um, a good one, I feel like for a woman in her thirties is likely going to be, um, Progestins Plus. Progestins Plus is likely going to be the one that's going to help to balance your progesterone. That's just kind of what we need. So yeah, if it's on the chin, girl, it's definitely hormones. Um, hairline, yeah, I know what you're talking about. Do you use um, products like hair care products? Because sometimes when I do, I notice that I get like milli. I don't know, is that what you call it? Milia? It's like these little bumps right in here. They're like full fledged acne, but it's just like these little bumps. Um, that can either be hair product or just like your scalp build up. So hence you want to do the apple cider vinegar, right. To help get rid of that build up on your skin. Yeah. That's really good. Love it. This is so fun. You guys, I feel like it's getting close. I don't know if we're going to be hundred percent there, but it's definitely getting close. I can feel tightness. I can definitely feel the tightness on my skin. Um, do you guys want to do more fun DIY classes like this? I was kind of hoping more of you would be doing it with me, but I get it. It's kind of sometimes hard to plan ahead because I wanted to see all of us doing these like silly Viore strips together. It would have been really fun, like a really cute photo to take, but that's okay. I'll be the guinea pig and I'll show you. <laughs> I love it. I love it. But yeah, I can for sure feel the tightness on here. So yeah, who wants to do these, like these fun DIYs, right? Like not scripted. We're just having fun. We can use our promo oils. Like we pretty much just use promo oils. Um, want to keep doing it? Yeah. We'll just change up the theme. What other things do you want to see from us? Like we already did cleaning. Um, we can do body care. We could do kids stuff. Like, let me know if there's other DIY stuff that you're interested in. Okay, Sue's got a question. When you make the apple cider vinegar rinse, um, do you use distilled water? So I will tell you, you probably do want to use distilled, right? Which is just, you know, it doesn't have all the gunk in it. I basically just use tap water or Berkey water, right? Like it's filtered. You definitely want to be using something like that. But if you just have tap water, go ahead and just use a tap water. That's a good question though. Yeah, I like it too, Wendy, using the oils we got. So make sure you're getting your promo oils every single month because there's so many great ways to use them. And honestly, if you don't know, put it in your diffuser, mix and match some different combos because you never know what's gonna come up. And then don't be afraid to make some really fun skincare products too. Um, so easy to do. This is stuff that you would have bought in the stores. Like I used to buy these, these Biore strips for like what, five, 10 bucks. I can make it with an egg. I still have a ton of the egg white left. We could have had a party. I could have had like 10 of you over here and we could have done it together with one freaking egg. So it's crazy how like one, a little bit goes a really long way. So hopefully we've inspired you to use your promo oils, right? That's such a great gift that we're getting from Young Living. It's freebies that we're getting just for spending 100, 190, 250, 300, sometimes 400 PV. But you guys, it's so worth it. You get so much for free and there's so many great uses you can get out of it. So thanks so much for joining us tonight for the DIY skincare class. Um, I'm going to try and peel this off in a little bit. I'm still not ready. So I think I need like another five to 10 minutes, but we're going to transition right now. And I know I look ridiculous for anybody who's joining us for the business call. I want to encourage you all. Um, we do these every Tuesday. Please stay on. Even if you're not doing the business yet, just come and join and learn with us. Um, in fact, this is a class you'll definitely want to join because we're going to be talking all about 
how to make $200 in a day. Who could use $200 right now? I could use $200 right now. Tell me, raise your hand, type in the chat box. Who could use $200 right now? You need to be on this call. We're gonna transition right now. Please stay on and join us. I'm just gonna turn off the recording and then start it again.